السلام علیکم ورحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ عید الاضحیٰ مبارک ٹو آل دا پیپل ہو آر لسننگ بلیورس ہیو اے لیگیسی ٹو فالو اینڈ دس عید عید الاضحیٰ اور دا بگر عید اور دا عید الاضحیٰ ریمائنڈس اس آف دا لیگیسی آف پرافٹ ابراہیم علیہ السلام پرافٹ ابراہیم دا فادر آف آل آف اس اینڈ دیٹ لیگیسی از دا لیگیسی آف سیکریفائز سبمیشن اوبیڈینس اینڈ دا لو آف اللہ unconditional love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this there's so much to learn from it and there are so many lessons that we can actually adopt and you know uh, proceed our life with and it's important for us to understand not only to actually continuously uh, you know process and repeat the story of Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam on this Eid but also to understand how it resonates from the day and age today how it resonates with our current day realities today like the conviction he was called a terrorist he was he was called like you know a wrong doer he was called like you know uh, an outlaw he was called a wrong person at the time when he was roughly 17 or 18 when he actually went against the the, the disbelievers who were worshiping the idols at the very young age and then moving on so many precedents that he said Uh, that he said as the, as the prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we have so much to learn from Ibrahim alayhi salam's story. If you have not learned his story fully, I highly, highly, highly recommend you that you take some time out of your busy schedule and read the story of Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam right from the beginning of the place where he actually was exploring who the God is, who the Lord is. And he actually explored and he actually, you know, uh, believed that with complete research and conviction alhamdulillah so he was an amazing amazing prophet one of the mightiest prophets and he was called the khalil allah the friend of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which is amazing alhamdulillah so we have a legacy to follow and today on eid ul adha i know everybody is uh, busy meeting with families with friends with colleagues everybody but this eid also reminds us that there are so many people like thousands of muslim children and women and seniors and men are besieged oppressed and going through brut- brutal murders going through oppression going through unfair injustice right unfairness and injustice and please please keep them in your prayers today and please keep speaking up for them the most bleeding the most important the crucial issue Uh, faced by Muslim Ummah right now is the issue of Palestine. And this is not new. It's been happening for more than 75 years. It didn't start on October 7th, by the way. And there are so many conspiracies. There are so many lies that are, that are fabricated for the people of Palestine when they're actually going through genocide, when they're actually being besieged, when they're actually uh, getting oppressed and they're uh, being blamed by people who are actually do not follow the justice and they are not mindful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they don't fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So remember to share the stories of Palestine. Remember, the, remember to share the stories of burned children, burned alive women and children. Remember to share the stories of people who are actually assaulted in front of their family members for for doing nothing innocent people 40000 people have died since october 7th alone so remember to you know pray for them and make dua to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala actually relieve them from this pain this oppression and keep sharing the stories of their plight so more people in the world can understand more people can actually understand this is not a two way state solution thing this is not a war there is no collateral damage it's it's an occupied territory occupied by the terrorist state of israel and palestinian people or the palestinian people who are actually the real land owners of palestine are actually being besieged uh, you know pushed murdered brutally assaulted and you know tortured in their own lands imagine somebody comes into your house locks you up in into your uh, bedroom right and it stays there And then when you want to come out, they say, you know what? The house belongs to me because I have been staying here for, for a few hours. Imagine, imagine the agony, imagine the frustration, imagine the anger. And then, you, you know, on top of that, somebody kills your dad, somebody kills your mom, somebody kills your sister in front of you or rapes your sister in front of you. And then actually says, you know what? I'm the rightful owner of this land. I'm the rightful owner of this property. You have to save your life by just evicted, evicting, get away. you know escape from this property imagine imagine this in the civilized world can you even imagine something like that happening to you and those people in palestine are actually living this hell 
They're actually going through this for, for years, almost a decade, 75 years, for God's sakes. You know, you know the, the whole two generations can be raised, you know, and they're killing the generations there. And again, this is the legacy of Pharaoh, you know, Pharaoh they're following. He, was, he, he actually tried to overpower, you know, the people of that time, the Bani Israel, by just killing their children, right? And Israel is following that. This recipe or this brutality or this war crime was failed then, right? And it will fail again. But the, the sacrifices, perseverance, and conviction of people of Palestine will not go in vain. It's registered with God and it's actually also getting uh, their word out, they're sp they're spreading Islam because of their conviction. So we have to be thankful for them. We have to be praying for them. We have to be very patient with, with our own realities. We have to be patient with our own issues because we cannot complain. We don't have the right to complain. Jazakallah khair everybody for joining. Thank you so much for joining. Appreciate everybody joining live. And thank you so much for your voice, voice for Palestine. Please keep spreading the word. Palestine is not an untold story and shouldn't be, right? It's a real story. It's a real story of genocide, genetic cleansing, ethnic cleansing, you know, war, hate, crime, everything. Israeli crime should not go unnoticed, right? Israeli crimes should not be buried under the rug. Israeli crimes should be folk, should be exposed to the world so everybody understands, Muslim or not, right? You don't have to be a Muslim to speak for Palestine. You don't have to be even an Arab to speak for Palestine. Because it's a human rights issue. It's a human rights reality that these people are living in. There were other nations who went through this, right? Today is Palestinian uh, nation. Tomorrow it might be you. So remember before it comes, knocks, to your, knocks on your door, speak up for Palestine. Speak up for the people, the brutally assaulted people of Palestine. Because God is watching over them. There will come a time when, you know, the wrongdoers will be punished. But you have to speak up and do your part. Because you know what? If you don't speak for justice, you don't speak for anything. If you don't stand for justice, you don't stand for anything. That's my message for Eid al-Adha today. Keep enjoying the Eid. Keep, um, you know, having fun with family and all that. I'll do that too. But don't forget the people of Palestine. They might not stand a chance tonight, today, and two hours after, right? And tomorrow. So there is no Eid. They will be they will be celebrating, praying to God, praying, you know, worshiping God as they're supposed to, right? But they don't even know if the Eid prayer will actually help them finish the Eid prayer. They don't know. They don't there is no tomorrow for them. Many many of them. So remember them in your du'as, remember us in your du'as, remember the people of Palestine, remember the people of Sudan, remember the people of Afghanistan, remember the people of Kashmir, remember the people of Burma, remember the people of Uyghur community, and also, also, please do remember the people of Pakistan in your special prayers. They are going through the same kind of suppression and oppression by their own army. And remember to actually keep raising voices for those people. Because it's, a, it's an obligation. It's not a choice. It's an obligation. We live in a privileged world. And we feel privileged when nobody is bothering us. Right? And we think uh, everything is rosy. No, it's not. Right? So people are living their realities, very harsh realities. Right? And we are living our own, you know, privileged life. Remember to speak up. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.